Every single year, there's hundreds of changes in Google Ads that you need to know to optimize your ads to get the absolute best performance. In this video, we're gonna go through every single change that happened last year. I'm gonna react to every change and how I think it's gonna impact your ads in 2024. So the first major change that we saw in 2023 was the sunsetting or rather the deletion of Google Optimize. Google Optimize was a platform that actually allowed you to optimize and A-B test your entire website without having to edit your code, without having to change anything and show you all your results and it's gone. So now we have to use different alternatives. Next thing we saw was Google Analytics completely changed. You might know GA or Google Analytics as Universal Analytics. This is what was most common. It's what we always knew. It's what we always use as marketers. That shifted to GA4 mid-year. We saw high value optimization events for new customer acquisition in Performance Max. This is the first time we're seeing a combination of high value plus new customer tools. Next piece is you can't actually use content targeting anymore in video campaigns. So if you're running YouTube, you can't target individual content. You have to give an interest. You have to give some sort of list, but no more content targeting is existing. This is just showing that Google's making its clear direction into more interest, more customer base lists, more broad campaign level brand exclusions and asset reporting in Performance Max. This was probably the number one thing we requested all of 2022 and all of 2023 until we finally got it. Performance Max got huge upgrades. We're actually able to see what's going on, what products are driving most of the performance, what auction insights look like in Performance Max, what keywords are performing for us, a whole boatload of recommendations for audiences, tons of insights here, what's driving the conversions, what's not driving the conversions, and how we can optimize from there. We saw the rollout of automatically created assets at the end of 2023. This is basically Google's ability to generate your assets based on what it sees on your website. It could also generate your assets based on what you type in. So if you have a certain product, you actually might now for the first time be able to allow Google to write your headlines, write your descriptions. And this actually took a step further at just the beginning of this year, where Google is actually in that beta or alpha phase of basically a chat GPT style of introducing and writing your copy for you. So the search interest targeting and and presence or interest in exclusion. There used to be three settings in your geographic search settings. Now there's two settings, kind of a nice change that it went through, simplified it, made it a little bit easier for us. We saw major Google ads menu and design changes. One of the things that I like the most in the ad account is this little thing called spacing. And most of these are in beta, especially if you're operating multiple accounts. And I like to keep it extra small so I can see as much information on my screen as possible. We saw some expanded local service ads into new countries and businesses. Businesses. Not a huge update, but just good for all those local businesses. We rolled out site names, sponsored labels, and favicons. These are just mostly in Performance Max, but they actually play across the board. So you'll see in addition to your logo, you have a website name. You could add sponsored labels. You could also add those little favicons, which are the little things at the very top of the URL up here. Next piece that Google updated, YouTube overlay ads are gone. We saw a change in GA4, which is the new platform anyway, from non-direct click import to full cross-channel conversions. Next change is YouTube ads are now introducing mixed formats. So it's good to see that you could actually run one single video and it can run in YouTube shorts. It can run in YouTube full length and pre-roll. So really, really nice to see. They also launched ads transparency center. So this is the place where you can see why your ads are being flagged, why you have disapprovals, potentially why your ads are limited for different reasons. So a really nice little function like proof of work upgrade that I like to see. Google added pictures in Gmail. That's going to really play into your performance max campaign. Most people are not able or running Gmail ads individually at this point. So Pmax with that Gmail placement, we're going to see some pictures in there. One of the biggest changes that we saw in 2023 that's going to be the most impactful in 2024 is the removal of multiple attribution models. What an attribution model is, is it allows you to see where did your click or conversions come from and what did the value associated to those conversions and clicks come from at what point in the funnel? So for example, a first click model would give give credit to a conversion for the first click that the user had. So if my journey was I clicked on a Facebook ad, then I clicked on a Google ad, then I went to the site organically, Facebook in a first click model will get all of the credit. In a last click model, organic will get all the credit because it was the last thing that I did to get to your website and therefore make a purchase. When we see these attribution models being removed, we know Google is moving to this data-driven attribution that they've been pushing for a few years now. It's probably a healthy change that people do use more of the data-driven attribution. However, I did like to look at first click. I especially like to look at a position-based attribution when we could. It's nice to see that they're keeping last click in there. So you're gonna have now last click and 
data-driven attribution. Moving on forward, we saw the introduction of vehicle ads. They're out of beta, they're now in PMAX, really not an impact for the clients that we work with, but just a little change here the overall. We saw the expansion of YouTube Shorts into video reach campaigns and adding in-feed video to video reach campaigns. So basically, video reach campaigns got more placements, more availability to actually reach users. Big mega change now, similar audiences are gone. Similar audiences, which a lot of people like to mix up with lookalike audiences, are basically the ability to take a customer list that you have and say, Google, go create a similar audience, go create a lookalike audience based on this seed audience. The value of that is pretty obvious. You're giving Google a signal for what you want your customer to look like and therefore go find more people that look like this and target them. Google completely stripped this away. Again, we are seeing the move to broad. We're seeing the move to these big interest audiences and actually owning your first party data, which is why it's so, so, so critical to have integrations like Klaviyo set up, to have your GA4 properly set up really more than ever before. Moving around to GA4, we saw funnel reports go live. This is a great, healthy upgrade that we needed. This is one of the most impactful things that we had in Universal Analytics, the ability to see what was happening across your checkout, what was happening across the user journey. We're now seeing that for the first time in GA4. Next piece here, you can now include your business name and logo. A few things that we also saw be introduced that were really not super impactful. We saw a new parameter for GBraid for measuring iOS and new GAD parameters. We also replaced the trusted store badge with top quality store. Not really any big impact there. Custom video campaigns are gone. You now have to use regular video campaigns, which are primarily YouTube at this point. New campaign type demand gen was introduced, which is literally a rebranding of discovery. It is souped up with slightly better features, especially in 2024. We saw the introduction of lookalike audiences, not to get confused with similar audiences, and those are mostly going to apply to video-based campaigns. Big change that we're seeing right now that was just introduced at the tail end of 2023 and moving into 2024 is Google Merchant Center Next is going to replace Google Merchant Center. Merchant Center Next is basically a fundamentally easier version of Merchant Center to use. I think it's going to take a little bit of time for us to get our wits about it, just like it did with GA4. Most importantly, if you have the option to upgrade to Google Merchant Center Next, wait right now. I would just hang back and just wait until it's actually ready to be rolled out and you have to roll out. There's nothing wrong with the normal Merchant Center. Your products won't show up any different. Everything will be completely functional as is. We saw a huge rollout in Performance Max towards the end of 2023. It's going to be one of the most impactful Performance Max changes that we see in 2024. And it is the introduction of brand exclusions. So basically for the first time on your own, without having to contact your Google rep, you could actually exclude brand searches or just brand in general on your specific Performance Max campaign. You could actually exclude other people's brands. So if you are in a competitive suite with five to six different brands, you could remove all those other brands from your Performance Max campaign. We've seen about 90% negative coverage, which is exactly what we want. Next piece is we're starting to see here and there in beta, broad match settings on and off. This applies for multiple places throughout the Google suite, but the broad match setting is the ability to actually turn on or turn off the ability to upgrade your keywords to broad match. Broad match always needs to be off unless we are using broad match campaigns or broad match keywords. We saw another major upgrade in Performance Max and you can kind of get the theme by now. If you're listening to all of this, you're going to see Performance Max come up over and over and over and over. Google is investing all their cash in Performance Max. It's working. I'd highly advise using it. That's where the cash is going right now. We saw the introduction of 15 headlines in Performance Max. You can give Google 15 unique headlines in Performance Max. They are really leaning into the AI learnings to get the absolute best performance for you. We saw the introduction of the audience builder in ads, and we also saw multiple pictures in one ad. This is very similar to a slideshow functionality in Facebook, not to be confused with a carousel. This is when a picture changes for you. So we're seeing multiple pictures in one ad. We saw another ability to upgrade a campaign into a performance max campaign. Google's really trying to shift all those dollars into Pmax. And this one comes from DSA. So you could actually take an existing DSA campaign, turn it automatically into a performance max campaign. A little scary when it gets a little bit that far. DSA still has a ton of value and I would avoid turning those campaigns into Pmax campaigns, but definitely your standard shopping can move into Pmax. We saw try on clothing with AR ads. Not quite there yet for me. I would not try to explore this quite yet if you're in the beauty categories or the clothing categories. Pretty cool that Google's investing here. I like to see it. We saw store sales reporting and bidding in Performance Max campaigns. This is just going to help with like in-store stuff. Really nice if you're running an in-store like a boutique or any sort, you could actually run Performance Max and track your in-store sales. A mega change that was also made at the second half of 2023 is the removal of the buy on Google button. If you're doing Google shopping, you used to see a lot of options to buy from different places. Also, 
also see buy on Google, which would actually transact to the purchase on Google. That is completely gone now. All your transactions will happen on your website, which I think is a way smoother experience for both the user and the brand. Two more big upgrades related to Pmax. We saw smart shopping disappear. So we went from shopping to smart shopping to performance max. We are all in performance max at this point. So smart shopping is gone. Search themes were introduced into performance max. Search themes allow you to tell Google what are your products about? What should they be showing up in search? If you're not already running search themes in your ads and you run search themes, you are likely to see an influx in your spending within search in a performance max campaign. If your performance max campaign is previously spending 90% of its budget on shopping and you introduce search themes, you may then see a spike in your search spend and reduction in your shopping spend on that performance max campaign. So be careful when you're doing that. You're setting things up from scratch. I do recommend running them. If you're not setting up from scratch, I would avoid upgrading, so to speak, with search themes. We saw improvements in personal data safety in the US and the EU. We saw automated customer match lists be introduced. If you have GA4 set up and Google Ads pixels and tags set up, these are just gonna be really helpful for you. I highly recommend you get all that stuff set up. We saw Google Ads enhanced conversion set up for offline conversion imports. This is really helpful if you're running something in store, if you have a storefront, or if you're doing something that's a little bit off your normal website that can't easily be tracked with the tag. Enhanced conversions are now applicable at the account level. Simple upgrade made overall enhanced conversions implementations easier. So as I mentioned before, similar audiences went away and were now replaced with optimized targeting. Optimized targeting is basically a button you click that says optimize my targeting. We have not explored this enough for me to give a real, real valid opinion on this. What I have seen in a few accounts is it's haywired the spend. It's made the spend go shoot through the roof. Generally, we're waiting on this to run optimized optimized targeting until we're really confident with it. We don't like to spend our clients money unless we absolutely know we're going to get the best return possible. You could exclude URLs in performance max. Good change. Pmax gets more inventory. So we're actually seeing performance max expand its total inventory, more YouTube placements, more search placements, more shopping placements over any of the standard original products within Google. We saw page feeds be introduced in performance max. You could think of this very similar to a standard DSA campaign or an old school DSA campaign. You could take a grouping of products or pages on your website and now actually push it into Performance Max and it will create a ton of content, headlines, descriptions, everything for you ahead of time. These are one of the best and most old school CPC methodologies to use. Now you either have to use manual CPC or use a automated bidding strategy like maximize conversions. We saw the introduction of the YouTube shorts placement into YouTube ads. So you could actually advertise on YouTube shorts, huge direction that Google is going with to try to compete with TikTok. Here's the thing, we haven't seen TikTok be successful nearly across the entire advertising your sphere. I definitely don't think we're going to see YouTube shorts be successful anytime soon, unless major, major changes are made there. There was a ton of safety cookie and consent based things that were introduced throughout 2023. Very low impact from what I can see, probably super high impact for someone who's in data or security. This gigantic list of changes makes me think that Google is investing so heavily into performance max. It's where we have to live right now. If everything I just went through was just overwhelming, if there's too many changes here, if you're not investing in performance max, if you're not into YouTube shorts, shorts, if you don't have GA4 set up, then I highly recommend you hit us up at themoonletters.co. You can apply to work with us at any time. One thing I will say, we only work with brands who are doing over $30,000 in spend per month. If you're not in that category yet, then keep working on these things, get to 30K and then hit us up when you get there. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you all in the next one.